welcome back to As It Happens. This week, politicians are trying their hand at television presenting. I'm Natasha Mazzoni from the DA. I have a very special guest with me this evening, Feral Huffaji, the editor-at-large of the Huffington Post. Feral, welcome, and thank, thank you. you very much for accepting my invitation tonight. Feral, I'd like to talk a little bit about fake news. This is a phenomenon not unique to South Africa. It's something that's happening the world over. How do you feel fake news affects what real news is, and, and where do we find the blurring between what is fake and what is actually factual? Um, I think that as a politician, and I must say it's very nice to know you have a fallback career, um, because political lives can be short. You're doing great here tonight. I think as a politician, it's very important to see the way that fake news or misinformation is misshaping politics around the world. We've seen it impacting elections everywhere from the United States to Vietnam to Thailand to the Philippines. It's happening everywhere. It spreads extremely fast. Um, I think your party last week had um, had its first major experience when an auditor, a false auditor to General's report was put out, retweeted by some of your members. Um, as journalists, we have had to apologize uh, for publishing information which turned out not to be correct. I think it puts in all of us an extra degree of accountability. We have to verify but also see that in this era of um, low barriers to techno technology entry, it's so easy to create misinformation. Now, Feral, Twitter, social media, yes. it's created an instant platform for news. Yes. As news happens, it goes out. Mm. People often unknowingly, perhaps, share things on Twitter. Have you ever fallen prey to, to a fake news story? And if so, how did you react? What was your reaction sure. once you realized it was so, fake so news? So first to step back a little, Natasha, I think, I'm not sure what your experience has been, but mine has been that social media has been a, a liberating, um, excellent medium to, to find news more quickly. It's now, by all statistics, Twitter in South Africa is the most um, influential news medium. Alongside that has come all these unintended consequences. Um, yes, I have. I've had to apologize on several occasions for retweeting something which I hadn't checked. Um, my, my, um, the way I retweet now is filled with much, much greater care because there is a lot of false information out there. Very interesting, yesterday Twitter announced that they're finally going to do something about these people who troll us so badly, uh, or the bots. Those are the automated fake accounts that act like a political army, and that's extremely good news because when I've tried to um, report to Twitter, there was absolutely no uh, real response from them. Feral, you and I have had heated Twitter debates. Yes, we have. We've had uh, what they call tours. Yes. Um, and I think people always think that you and I are adversaries, and, and quite frankly, we're not. Yes. We, we, are, we disagree fundamentally on certain issues, but certainly on, on some issues, it's a good platform to air our views. Do you find that um, race relations in our country have become somewhat strained because of the way certain tweets are taken out of context, certain threads are broken up? And how do you as a journalist see Twitter taking us forward in having a constructive debate rather than feeding into the hate narrative? Mm. So, th so this is a, a subject around the world. Um, I particularly watch um, a young editor from the Washington Post. His whole purpose in the world is to make social media a space of civilized political conversation and they have a whole uh, coral project which is designed to ensure that social media doesn't become this plate of, place of hate and toxicity um, but in, 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 instead a place that can grow nations and grow societies and I certainly want to go into that more instead of um, the, the, the easy responses. I must say, uh, the other week when you when you tweeted about your dad, um, my instinct was to be very angry and tweet back. But I thought maybe there's a more constructive way of doing this. And today I was reading an article where and trying to do it, where if you differ with somebody and it gets ugly, maybe call them up instead or establish a direct conversation. This becoming my personal practice to try and run it a little more decently, because in a country with fragile race relations, I think. To Twitter can be very important in exposing things. I mean, how quickly the Vicky uh, Momberg recording went out. I think it can tell us about people. We can have important discussions. But perhaps it can make us fracture more 
than the moment requires of us. I think unity is, is paramount. So, Ferio, your advice, I mean, we take your advice very seriously, and especially as politicians, we often fall prey to this, yes. is think before you tweet, mm. um, don't feed the trolls, and certainly, you know, don't spread the hate around. Yes, That's and, what you and certainly I think, um, think very carefully bef before you tweet, because it is um, uh, an extension of your personality and of your political persona, of your personal beliefs. Once it's out there, it's out there. And as Emma Sadlier, the excellent digital lawyer, often points out, you can't take it back. It's been screenshotted somewhere. It certainly is making me a more careful uh, journalist and a more careful South African. Feryl, in terms of your journalism, yes. and, and I've discussed this with many journalists, if you see something I, I do and you like it yes. and you, you tweet, I thought that was a great interview, yes. you immediately get attacked by, by Twitter saying, oh, well, then you're pro-DA. Mm. Um, the same way you would if you said something that you enjoyed the ANC doing. Yes. How as a journalist do you balance uh, your political views, because obviously you have very strong political views, yes. with always making sure you keep a neutral space in which we can engage? Yes. So um, I think it's important to give plaudits when they do, uh, when, when they are deserved. I thought you were um, magnificent on the committee that was um, exposing what was happening in our state-owned enterprises because it became part of that major battlefront, this war that was fought against a state capture. And I think many of us were um, not shy to say so, to give plaudits when they were due. Um, the other week, when I, I think you made a big Twitter of uh, flops, flops, um, we were equally critical of that. And I suppose just to keep that balance, what does concern me now in my, my, uh, in my own social media life is I think we must label our tweets as opinion and news um, so that people who follow can begin to make that distinction. Because it's not like those are our personal um, timelines at all. You are representing wherever you're from. Um, the same, I would guess would go with political um, leadership. Mm. Feryl, thank you very much for that advice. We'll be back just now. Thank you. After the break, I'll continue with my guest and take your calls. This is As It Happens.